that so today's session will be on variables and data types first we'll understand what is this variables and data types see in a very simple words i'll tell you data type means the kind of data what actually we are using what kind of type it is it can be a number it can be a text it can be a date or it can be any other formats so classifying this is called as data type so what data i'm using for writing a program or functions i have to decide say suppose if i want to use text then it is a text data type if i'm using numbers then it's a number data type in number itself we can have different formats that is integer or say complex numbers or floating numbers so if you compare this python with other softwares so in other programming language you have to specify whether it's a text or date or uh, say numbers or something but in python you don't have to bother at all so you don't have to think what kind of data type i'm actually using the python interpreter itself will know that okay this is the data type what they are using so you don't have to mention anywhere like other programming language that i need to specify okay this is the data type what i'm specifying so you don't have to bother about it but there is something called as variable variables are nothing but they are reserved memory locations to store values that means in a memory there is a space which will be allocated to store some values so what will happen if i'm actually using a value multiple times so i don't have to keep using the same values so instead what i can do is i can just take one say variable and then assign some value to that variable so that i can use that multiple times say for example let's go here i'll say a equals 10 this a is a variable and i'm assigning 10 to this variable this equals is an assignment statement we saw this operators in the previous session a equals 10 that means value 10 has been assigned to this a now you can do any kind of calculations or say you can use it in any functions or even in the programs as well let's say i want to print say print i'll just say a and if i run this i'll get this result it is actually called as variable because say here a equals 20 plus 30 in this case it is 10 and i'm assigning this 10 to this variable a now in this point it is print a if i give it will give me result as 10 now if i run this one a will become 50 now i'm not used print now if i go here and say print a and say run see it is giving me as 50 because in the first stage a is a variable wherein assigned 10 as the value the next step i assigned 20 plus 30 for this a then i try to print a now it is giving me as 50 because there is a memory location which will be allocated here and now we had put 10 in that location then later i just replaced with the 20 plus 30 a got replaced with this value now when i'm actually accessing the value of a then i'll get the latest value that means whatever value i have used that will come here let's go here i'll say a equals again if i mention it as 10 and now if i run this now if i use this print a run this see again it will become 10 so likewise this variable is something but it's a memory location where i'll be storing the value and there is a name for that we also can call it as address for that memory location and i can use this for further calculations here i mentioned a equals 10 now let's say a equals i'll mention a text now see 
nowhere I mentioned this A as text or number. Now if I run this, now here if I use this print A and if I execute this, see, I'll get the text. So the programmer need not bother about whether I should declare this as text or numbers or any other data type. But this is the advantage of Python. Right. So we understood about the variables. Then I was talking about assigning the values. I just showed you some examples. That is equals is what is the assigning operator. It will assign the values. Now let's take one example here. I given this examples here also and I've given with this file which is called as programs. So here I've put all the programs which you can use it. Same examples we have in this notes as well. You can refer this as well. So here I've taken one whole number, a decimal number and a text. Let me copy this. Just copying it instead of typing it. And I'll paste it here. If you see this, here it says counter. Counter equals 100. Miles equals 1000.0. The name is ITIS. That is text. Now let me go and execute this. I'll say execute. Now the values have been assigned to this. But if you want to access the values, then I have to use this print. Say print counter. Let me run this. See, I'll get this 100. I want this floating number. Floating number is uh, means it is a decimal number. Let me go here. I'll say print some miles. Run this. See, I'll get the decimal number. If you want to print the name, I'll say print name. Run this. I'll get the result. So this is how I can assign the values. Now one more thing you should keep in mind as we discussed in the previous session. See, if I use like this. If I run this, I'll get error because this miles and the miles what I'm using here both are different. Here it says capital M, here it says small m. So it is case sensitive. So you should be very careful with these say cases as well. All right. Now this is for single assignment. Say I'm just assigning the value like this by line by line. Say in one line I have this counter, then miles and names. Assignment can be done multiple assignments at once also. Like this say A equals B equals C equals 1. That means all these will have same values. This is called as multiple assignment. If you think that there are some variables have to assign same values then I can go and say that is the same variable a equals b equals c equals let's say 10. Now in this case a b c will be 10. Let me print say print a then print b print c. Now if I run this all these three will be 10. This is one way of assigning if you feel that there are many variables which has to be assigned with the same values. Or we can also assign different values by giving a comma separator. Now I'll say a comma b comma c then I'll give some numbers as well as text. Anything is possible. So here what will happen a comma b comma c if I say equals then the first item here, the element, will be assigned to the first variable, second to the second variable, third to the third variable. Let's go here. I'll say a comma b comma c equals red comma. Let's put some decimal number comma. Then I'll say one text. Now here a will be hundred, b will be 123.45 then c will be ITAs. Let me copy the same code here. Just paste it here instead of again typing it. Say control V. 
Now let me execute this. See, 100, 123.45 and ITS. Like this also you can assign the values to variables, multiple variables at one line itself. But the preference is go with this kind of assigning the values because it will be easy for me to know which variable has got what is the value here if you do like this multiple variable and multiple values in the same line then it will be a little confusing because you will not know which variable has got which values so you'll have to go and keep checking it but that depends on person to person how they actually practice but i recommend go with this line by line assigning of the values to variables so that is a good practice right so we understood about the multiple assignment and single assignment of variables next we'll see the different type of data type so i was talking about the data type whether it is a number or text or it can be various other data types let's go here so it says the data stored in memory can be of many types right so that's what i was telling so the value what i'm trying to store in the memory location what i've created can be of different types in python we have very simple data types not like other programming language we have so many data types here we have very few data types say so numbers it can include decimal numbers it can include a whole numbers or there is something called as complex numbers for decimal numbers we call it as float for whole numbers we call it as integer and then for complex number we call it as complex now have these numbers then string string is nothing but the text it can be alphanumeric or just alphabets list list means i can have a list of names with combination of numbers as well so list means it will say like list of fruits a list of vegetables or a list of companies so it can be any list but here it can have the mix of numbers as well as text set is again similar to our list but here list is actually indexed indexed means it is 0 1 2 3 4 5 the index actually start from 0 for uh, text or list or these things but set is actually just like a dumped data so we don't have any index for that we'll discuss this later not in this chapter but in detail in the coming chapters we have these tuples some people call it as tuples some people call it as tuples so you can actually you know however you want you can pronounce both are actually right some people call it as tuple some people call it as tuple list and tuple both are same list also can contain text and numbers these tuples also can contain numbers and text but the only difference is list can be edited tuples cannot be edited we can also call it as read only this one what you see the list to recognize that easily this list will be with square bracket and tuples will be with normal brackets set will be with say flower bracket this is square bracket this flower bracket and this will be a normal bracket like this say square bracket this is with flower bracket and this will be with normal brackets like this next is dictionary dictionary is a kind of unique data type so here what will happen is we'll have Say if you want to store some value, there will be a key name for that. A key and a value for that. Say for example, I want to store ITAS. What is ITAS? So for that I have to give a description. That is called as key. So we'll say company, then ITAS. Area, say Bangalore. State, say Karnataka, like that. For every value, there should be a key. So this dictionary will be a combination of key and values. Now you just understand this slowly. Once we get used to it, then you'll understand more about 
these data types so let me explain again numbers this will be decimal numbers whole numbers or complex numbers string this can be text text can be of capital letters small letters anything the combination also along with that i can have alphanumeric as well list is a list of elements items or values whatever you can say this will be enclosed with square brackets and it's a combination of text and numbers set is again similar to list it is also will uh, it's also will have uh, you know a list of values but they are not indexed pupils again it's exactly like list but they are read only they cannot be edited and these are also indexed dictionary is the combination of a key and value when let's go and understand briefly about these things and after that then we'll discuss about these things in detail with the functions what we have in these data types python numbers that is number data type so you can see here say number data type will store numeric values now we just saw one example here say here say a equals b equals c this is a number here it is storing 10 in all these three variables like here also we have an example say where 1 equals 1 where 2 equals 2 that means these two variables here it will have 1 here it will have 2 i can delete the variable delete in the sense suppose if i don't want so let's go here you just have to mention the variable name so here i have this a b c i'll say delete a let me run this or before that let's print this again i just try to print this say run the latest value whatever is there that will come here let me go here i'll say delete a run this now let me run this print a run it see a is not defined that means the variable a has been removed from the memory now i don't have that address at all say that uh, variable at all so it will say that we are not able to recognize this a so it is not defined you can delete multiple variables as well by using comma so if you want to delete so i can use something like this variable one variable two now let's go here i'll say delete b comma c run this now if i go here and try to print these three variables say run see a is not defined that means in the beginning itself it is throwing me error now let me remove this a now i'll run this see b is not defined let me remove this so c see c is not defined that means all three variables are deleted so it is throwing me error saying that it is not available so now if you want to initialize again i have to run this i can go here i can just run this now if i go here and run this see now i'll get this result because now you have assigned the values to those variables so you can delete the variables as well so we discuss about the integer float and complex numbers these are the types what we have in number data type here are some examples you can just go through this see you have some examples here like this so numbers is very simple it is just to have numeric values string means as i told you it is a combination of characters and it can be a numbers as well you know that it's a text now if you go here i have this string with some string value that is i'm trying to assign this value to this string that is variable str now let me copy this and i'll paste it here when i run this this str will have this value that is itech analytic solutions is a text which has been assigned to a variable name str 
if you want to extract data so if you want to extract the characters from this then i can use this square bracket you can see this thing subsets of string that means these are all this is the set which has been assigned to this str suppose if you want to extract a part of it a character of it then i can use this square bracket we call it as slice operator slice means you're just trying to slice this also if you want i can use a range here like this so this will actually give me the range say from this index to this index i need the value then i can use this colon and one more thing to remember the index whatever starts will start from zero say here zero one two three every character will have a index and here the index start from zero and from the end it will start from minus one here minus one minus two like this like this also i can have index so the text or numbers or whatever we are entering here it will be indexed from here it is zero to the number of characters whatever is there if you are coming from right side then it will be minus one and then it will count let's say minus one minus two minus three like this if you want to concatenate we used to have this and symbol in say excel or any other software so say programming language but here i have to use plus sign and if you want to repeat something say multiple times then i can use multiplication so we'll see how this actually works so suppose if you want to extract say if you want to print the entire data here so i can go here and say print str like what we do for other variables here i'm just taking print str and i'll say run see this giving me i take analytic solutions that is the complete text whatever is there in that particular variable i can slice this as i told you the index starts from zero i can mention the index number here say within the square bracket it should be within the square bracket let's go here say print say str square bracket if i say zero just take this zero if i say zero that means this character i let me run this see it is giving me i I can take the range of values. See here I mentioned 6 to 14. That means 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That is space also. Then it is 6. From here, 14th position. It's not 14 characters, 14th position. See, now this is the 6th position. Now here from here I'll count. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Here. so don't get confused this is the index number 0 to 6 from here and this will indicate the 14th character that means still here let's run this just copy this and i'll paste it here i'm mentioning it as from sixth index 14 characters i'll just run this see i'll get this and i'll get let's go back suppose I want all the characters after the sixth index. All the characters. I'm not specifying that. Okay, to take till here only. Then I'll say six colon and I'll not mention the character position here. Same thing what I have here. Let me copy this and paste here. And if I'm not specifying anything here, and if I run this, see, it'll give me all the characters after this sixth character means sixth index right next suppose if you want minus that is from right side let's go here it says minus 9 to minus 18 that means what i'll do i'll go here here when i'm taking reverse so first the highest value will come and then so it's a minus actually now let me run this See, I'm getting this analytic. So from here, let's count. Say minus one, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. See from here. Then again 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Till here. Say minus 9. So what it will do here. This is minus 9. And from here it is taking till minus 18. So I am taking minus 18 to minus 9 means that means from here till here. Like this. So you can either take from right side or from left side. If you are taking from left side, make sure that the index number you are remembering that it is starting from 0. If it is from right side, you have to mention it as from minus sign that is minus 1. So this is very important. Sometimes it will be a little confusing. So please, uh, you know, understand this one. Minus 9. So now I'm trying to give minus 9 to all the characters. Now if you go here, see, it is coming here, say, from here till here, minus 9. From here, all the characters means next, whatever character is there. I have not mentioned anything here. So from here, the next characters whatever is there like that so suppose if i give something here and if i run this see from here minus nine you have to run this because this was already taken so i have not run this let me run this now this has to be updated so now let me run this see it's taking from here nine character from here whatever characters like this so you have to understand just that from right side sorry from left side and right side that's it next one if you want to multiply or say repeat the same values let me go here I just keep it as this let it be now I'll say print str multiplied by two. That is, I'm just trying to multiply it the number of times I need. Let me run this. See, I take analytic solutions Bangalore, then again the same thing. So if I give three, then again this will repeat three times. So how many other times if you want to repeat, just give that this will get repeated. Next plus plus means concatenating if you want to add something say for example i want to add training here let me copy this and i'll go here str is i take analytic solutions bangalore i'm trying to add one more value here that is comma training this is the text actually now if i run this see it will concatenate this string whatever is there this can be another variable also so i can put this in another variable and then i can concatenate as well suppose if you want to concatenate two different uh, variables i can use str say another variable say str2 then i can say plus str2 i'll get this value so this is how we can use this string so this is actually indexed and i can use this for converting this into a list or say by you know using it in uh, loops or so many other things we can use so in the further session further sessions i'll be using these things by using index how we can actually do a lot of other programs as well all right next one is list list as i told you this will be within square bracket you can see this i have the square bracket Now, if you want to fetch the value, say I have some list here. As I told you, it can be a combination of numbers and text. So I have two lists here which I've created. The first list will have say Excel, then some number, old number, then I have this um, say decimal number, again one more text, one more decimal number. And here you can see one more list that is one number and one text. Let me create this list. I'm just creating the list here. Creating means I'm just assigning values to it. <coughs> Excuse me. See, list one and list two is ready. If you want to extract the 
elements in this list we call it as elements say print list one run this see i'll get all the elements from this list which are mentioned if i mention list two then i'll get list two values now again these list say this list the elements in this list are also indexed that means this is zero one two three four like this it will again start from zero same concept what we have used here to slice the uh, say um, the characters here same thing i can use here for slicing the elements as well let's go back and check see i use this print list to print the complete list if you want to extract the first character sorry the first element then i can use list of zero like what we did there in string same thing i can do here say list one square bracket zero see this will give me the result excel now let me execute this see it's giving me excel next step suppose if you want to have a range say index one till this third say this three is not that zero one two three it will take till here it is like say zero one from here third position say one two three here let me take this and i'll paste it here say run see one two three seventy six point five six that means from first index zero one from here till third element say one two three here to make it four here and run this see i'll get till pp let's go back i want all the elements that is i'm not specifically mentioning that okay from this uh, index to these many elements i need if i specify some index here with colon and will not mention anything after that it will take say 0 1 2 from here all the values let me run this see 76.56 then it is giving me all the values let's go back minus as i told you here this is again starting from minus here when i say minus 4 that means this one say minus one minus two minus three minus four let me paste it run this see minus one minus two minus three minus four from here all the values see from here all the values i'm getting right the next step so from minus four till minus one next multiplications like what we did with this text same thing this this slicing is similar to all the elements i mean all the data types say for text that is string then we have list and tuples all these will have similar way of slicing let me take this multiplication it says list 2 I'm using list two because it's a small list and we'll see how this will be multiplied means how it is actually repeating run this see it is repeating twice if we make it as three run this see the same elements are repeating three times concatenate concatenate means combining so I want to add a list one and list two. I'll go here, say print list one plus list. So what this will do, it will combine these two lists, say list one and list two. Run this, say list one and list two. This is for the list. Let's see the tuples and then I'll show you how we can differentiate see here also i have same list here 
at this time i'll rename this as tuple one tuple two you can also call it as tuple so there is nothing wrong go here run this so same operations we have just quickly just paste it here run this say so i'll get this the same uh, you know values what we have so instead of wasting time i'll just show you guys quickly running this see i'm taking the first element and then say first the third element again i'll get this result this from here to this and then from second element the second indexed element to all the elements let me copy this quickly and i'll just run this see i'm getting the same result what we had here all right next we'll see what is the difference between this tuples and this list here we use the same uh, say you know the functions or say the instruction here we got the result with the same thing but uh, if you see here i put this normal bracket here as i discussed but if you go to this list and check it is square bracket that is the only difference here now we'll see we'll try to edit one list and one tuple and see what will happen when i'm trying to edit a list and a tuple here i mentioned two different list here one is list other one is tuple both have similar values and you can see the difference here one is square bracket other one is normal brackets let me run this if I run this, that means I'm trying to assign the values to this list or say this variable. We'll try to edit. So in this case, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to edit the second value that is 0, 1, 2, this one, sorry. The index second value to SQL. That means the 76.56 should become SQL. Say first you go here. I'll specify the list and I'll say list of two. That means in this list one, second value that is 0, 1, and 2, this element should be replaced with SQL. Now, if I run this, see it got replaced. Now, if you want to check that list, let's say print list one. And if I run this, see the 76.56 became SQL same thing let's do for one say two the second element equals sql now let me run this see tuple object does not support item assignment that means it will not allow to modify that means it is read only so you can only read it fine next one this set will keep it as is so this is actually um as i told you this is non-indexed uh, you know unordered um, uh, data types so we'll just keep it as is so for this i need to teach you loops and then i'll come and i'll teach you so just keep in mind that set is actually unordered collection of items or say elements right let's come to this dictionary i was talking about dictionary and i told every value should be with a key value means a key let's go and check here yeah see here i have a name for that i'll give name that means name with what is the value i have this pin code here i have to give this pin say what type see here I given this step so that means i'm just giving you uh, so when i'm actually using this dictionary so every value should have a, a key and with the value and this will be with flower brackets even set also if you go here is also with flower brackets don't get confused with set and this dictionary now here i'm trying to assign one blank dictionary say dictionary one equals square bracket this is blank later on i can add see here i'm saying dictionary one 
I'm taking this key and I'm saying this is Excel codes. That means this key, whatever is there, that will have this value. Here I'll say dictionary 2 equals this is a VBA course. Let's assign this variables here. I'll not go to print anything, just will assign Sarah. Now, if you see this one, say dict details and dict one equals are the two dictionaries which got created, and here I'm trying to modify this first dictionary. Let's try to print it. Say print one and say this one, the Excel values, whatever is there. Let's run this. See, this has got this value. This is the key, and this is the value for it. Here I should not use the index number. So here I'm using the key value. Suppose if I'm in, you know using this index number, then it will give me the value that is whatever is there in the second. So this will be one index, this one. It's not that this is one index and this is one index. The entire set what is there that will become one index. Let's go here and I'll run this. See, in second index I've used this. This is VBA course. All right. Let's go here. Now, if you want to get the details, say here the complete value is this one, like what we did for our list and tuples. Let me copy this. And if I go here, if I run this, see, it will give me the entire dictionary here. I want to get only the key or only the values separately. Then I can use this details dot keys. So whatever key keys are there, this one name, pin type, that will actually come in a separate values like this. See, print. I've taken this ticked details dot keys. Let me run this. See, the keys are name, pin, and type. If you want to get the values, so I'll go here, paste it. I'll just change these two values. And if I run this, I'll get only the values here. So this is how I can use dictionary. But in detail, I'll tell you when you come to the dictionary data type. So there is a separate chapter itself for each and every data type. So there I'll discuss in detail about all these say data types so these are type conversions suppose if you want to convert from integer to float or float to integer whatever then you can use these conversion uh, say uh, operators or we can call it as type conversions so you can use this say for example i have one uh, decimal number if you want to convert that into integer i can use this say int so all this when you start working on the programs then i'll be teaching you this Right, let me close this. Let me close this program. So, here I have given all the programs here one by one. You can go and you can work on this. Next chapters are like say numbers, string, list, tuples, and dictionary. That means all these are in detail. So, here there are so many functions. So for next couple of classes, we'll concentrate on only these data types and functions used in that. And next, after this, we'll see how these are actually used in program. Let's open this number. Numbers, as I told you, can be integer, float, or it can be complex number. Let's go here. In this, I have various functions. So what we use in our Excel, similarly, there are so many functions here also. So we'll see what all those functions are. So we discuss this, say variable equals one or say 10, that I'm trying to assign the value. Then we also saw how to delete the variable. So I'll not go and I'll work on this again. So what we'll do, we'll directly go to the functions. So here you have this so many functions. So what I have done is I have taken all this into a separate sheet itself wherein I can use this as a program. 
let's discuss on this programs and then we'll start using these functions abs absolute this abs is actually used for converting a negative number into positive number if you see this here i have this minus 45 if you want to convert this into positive number then i can use this abs now let's go and assign these values say a equals 45 a equals minus 45 now if i say print a this will print minus 45 i want this to be plus 45 that means positive number that means i'm using a function called as abs let's go here let's say print abs of a like this now let me run this see it's giving me 45 what if i have a positive value say b equals 100 point 345 let's say print abs of p let me execute see it still gives positive number only All right let's go back maximum suppose i have a list in this list i want to get the maximum value what is the maximum value in this list then I can use this max function. Let's take these four lists and I'll paste it here and just assign this. Say print max of list one. I'm trying to find the maximum value in this list. Let me run this. See, thousand is the maximum value in this list similarly if i give let me change this to two and if i run this see the maximum value is 400 let's take this list three all are negative values now if i run this see the maximum value should be minus 10 not minus 80 because minus 80 is less than minus 10 right same thing i have minimum let's go here and i'll make it as minimum and then i will run this this will give me the minimum value of the list what I have selected say so list one run i'll get the minimum value in this list next rounding of the values if you want to round the values say if i have some decimal numbers let's take this values let's round it off we'll take the value but here we have to mention the number of decimals i'm trying to round the values say print round off say rnt1 now if i run this it will just give me the <coughs> complete round off of the values next one we'll mention print round rnt1 comma i'll say one you know, specifying to round off the number to single digit. See, here we have this what? Where is that? 70.23. Let me change this to 8 and see. Run this. Okay, now let me run this again. See, this becomes 70.3. That means this 8 will become 3. Now. Means it is making this round off to the higher level now if you want to round this with two digits let me copy this 
put it here and I'll make it as 2. Let me run this. See, 0.28. If I make this 4 as again 8, and this should become 70.29. Let me run this. And here, let me again run this. See, 70.29. I can increase the decimal numbers how much ever I need say 2, 3, 4 whatever I can use this. This is for round that is rounding of the values. So apps will give me a positive number then maximum minimum minimum will give me the lowest and the highest number and round will round up the values. Apart from this there are more other text functions. Let's say I want to round off the whole number. We have something called as ceiling and floor in our Excel. Similarly, in Python also we have the seal and floor. But whenever I'm using these kind of functions, I have to import a function, import a library called as math. Because these are not directly from the Python. So these are some of the mathematical functions which we have to import and then we have to work on this let's do it without importing and then i'll show you how this will actually work after importing let me just assign these values let me run this see math is not there let me just remove this so we will say run y value will say equals 3.14 just giving this hard coded value after importing that math then we'll see how we can use that see right now if i execute this program means this function say math dot seal of this particular value say print math dot seal of a see I'm just trying to take this math of C A. This is to round off the values. Now, if I run this, see, it will say math is not defined. Because that function, whatever is there, is not available. So for this, what I'll do, I'll go here, I'll use import. Just you have to give this code, that's all. Run this. Now this has been imported. Now let me run this. So run this see i'm getting this value we can see this it is actually a rounding of the values that is without decimal numbers let me make this as b 100.12 let me run this so i'm getting 101 that means it is rounding off to the next level let's say c 100.72 See, it's still giving me 100. Let me take this pi, say seal, see, 3.14 will be rounded off to the higher level, that is 4. Let me same, uh, take the same thing, and here, if I use floor, you have this floor. Floor is for lower level. Let's take this pi itself. Let's floor. And then I'll run this. See, it is rounding up to the lower level. That is 3. Next, let's see A, B, and C how it will work quickly. A minus 46. We can say this since it's a minus value. Where is that? Here. It is going to 46. That is the lowest value, whatever is there. Next is B. This should give me 100 because it is rounding off to the lower value. Then if I say C, it should be 100 only. Though it is a higher value here, it should still give me the lower value. This is for ceiling and flooring. Then we have this exponential. This is little, uh, you know, uh, a mathematical uh, function. Uh, it will actually have the power of 2.72 if you think that you want to work on this you can work on this this is for exponential values so if you want i'll just show you 
set print say math dot you have to use this math because this is the library what it is there otherwise it will not work i'll say yay or say p run this okay this will give me the result like this f apps this is again factorial apps which is available in my math library it's the same thing what we have here with this apps what we used previously same thing but this is the function which is used in uh, say math library so i can use this like this say print math dot f apps now i'll say b or say will give a because it has got minus value so if i run this it will give me okay so if you see this it is giving me this value with positive values that means this f apps is also like factorial say absolute number but this will come with this math library only we cannot directly use this mod mod means the modulus operator where i'll get the result as um, say reminder the print let me just copy this and thought okay print run this see here what it will do it will separate the whole number and the decimal number see here this is just like a factor is a modulus factorial any value if you take say i'll go here i'll say b and if i run this you can see that see the whole number is separated and the decimal number is separated if you go and check this see i have this 100 and this one so this will be the value that is it is trying to divide the value and it is taking the whole number separately and decimal number separately here next one power to the power of say for example i want this value say value 1 and value 2 if you want to check the power then i'll use this pow function say print math dot pow and here i'll say 2 comma 3 run this see 2 to the power of 3 2 into 2 into 2 it will give me 8 so you can specify the variable as well say b comma c or anything whatever you want you can just directly specify the variable also instead of these things square root suppose if you want to find the square root of it then i can use this sqrt say print math dot sqrt then i'll give 100 let me run this math dot square root see it will give me the square root of the values these are some of the functions which we have in math there are so many other functions also if you think that you want to do some mathematical functions you can go and check the libraries there are so many functions like this you can work next is we have random numbers suppose if you want to generate random numbers then i can use this for this again we have to import a random or uh, say library go here say import random and i'll execute this this is like a random number just it'll generate the random number now for example i want to generate one some random number i'll go here say print like in excel we have this random number so i have to mention this library name dot the function name like what we use is math dot function same thing random dot random is a function actually just run this so i'll get a random number uh, just a random number see keep running it it will keep changing next <clears throat> suppose if you want to have a range say like we have this rand and rand between so random is something like it will generate the decimal numbers 0 to 1 but if you want to generate a random number from specific range say from 1 to 100 or something then i can specify here like this 
say i'll take this random i'll go here print say rand range that is from 0 to 99 it will generate so 100 means it is a index number i'll go here see it will generate some number from 0 to 99 these are some of the number functions